Hey guys, as promised, uh, every month I'm going to give you a little update on Limit Theory Development, tell you where it stands, tell you what I've been working on, and uh, give you a general sense of how it's going. Uh, so January was a really amazing month. It was awesome, particularly for graphics technology as well as for the core engine technology. I'm really excited about all the developments. Um, unfortunately, you're not really going to see any new gameplay because, as I said, I really focused on graphics and the engine this month, but starting in February I'm really going to be rolling into some heavy gameplay development. Uh, the first thing I'm showing you here is the background nebulas, system backgrounds. Um, hopefully you can tell that they've come a long, long way. I did have some breakthroughs in, in procedural nebula generation that have led to what I think are much more beautiful, natural, and realistic looking backgrounds. They're still, they're still obviously fake, but uh, I think they look a lot better than they used to at least in my opinion. And of course they're still procedural so you'll see a unique one for every system that you visit. Yeah, so that's come a long way this month. Um, and as have asteroids. Of course you all know that asteroids are like my favorite thing ever because I love shooting at them, landing on them, flying at them. Uh, they're just the best. And they've come a long, long way particularly because of a huge change in how the engine handles models and procedural model generation. There's actually some pretty cool technology going on here, and because of it, hopefully you can tell that the detail level of asteroids has just skyrocketed, both in terms of the, sh the actual shape and the surface of the asteroid, as well as the quality of lighting and just like how natural and real the surface looks. Uh, all that has just gone way up, and I think they look quite nice now. Uh, they're certainly much more fun to look at and to land on, and uh, I don't know, some cool asteroids. Hopefully you can see that when you get up close, the, the level of detail is, is immense compared to what it was last month. Uh, but that's not all that's improved in terms of graphics quality, so I'm going to show you ships now. Here's my ship, and I hope you'll agree that it looks a lot better, although uh, don't focus on the shape. Um, because that did not come very far this month. The actual like form and structure of the ship still has a long way to go. Uh, but if you just look at the lighting quality, you know, the, the shadowing and the metal, uh, the shading quality, it is it is way, way better than it used to be. And I'm, I'm really happy with the look of it now. Like The rendering technology on ships is pretty much where I want it to be. So now we just have to get the procedural generator down. And, and I think we'll be good. So I'm excited about that. Uh, focusing on these asteroids again, you can see when I land on them that the level of detail is just way better than it used to be. Uh, it's going to be really fun to land on and explore them now. Of course, you can't get out of your ship, sadly, but still fun to explore them, I think. And another thing that's fun now is that you can collide with them. So. Boom. Uh, another big thing that I did this month was work on the physics and collision detection engine, which are both not easy things to do, but, but they're done now. And because of it, we can bounce around on asteroids. Uh, of course, don't expect to actually get away with this without destroying your ship in the real game. But you know how I like showing you impossible things in my tech demos. So surfaces in the game are actually hard now, and that is a good thing. It's a nice little crater, nice little place to hide. Yeah, I really like asteroids now. But I'm sure you're tired of asteroids, so you will go check out some other stuff. I'll go check out these capital ships over here. Another little detail you might notice is the turrets on the ship are now actually uh, tracking as sort of a base, a swiveling base, and uh, a pitching barrel, which is not how it used to be. It used to be the whole darn turret would turn, which is not realistic, but I think this looks much better now. And. I also think you'll find that because of the new rendering technology on ships, capital ships in particular, just look a lot more scary, a lot more epic. Again, 
there's still a long way to go on this shape. But I'm really happy with the look. There it is. Pretty darn big, too. See, it's got some escorts there that are really not doing anything. There it is. So that's, that's a scale factor of 50. 50 times the size of the fighter that I'm in. So that's pretty big. I imagine we'll see up to about 100, 200 scale factor in the final game. That's, that's limited by the physics and collision engine which has trouble with massive things, but it's doing pretty well on this. You can see I can do a little trench run here. Of course, you should try not to hit the ship when you do that. And I don't know if you noticed that little blue spark, but I'm about to show you shields. So shields are another thing that happened this month. Let me show you them. As you can see, I opted for a pretty minimalistic approach to shields. Uh, you can't see them unless they're being stressed by a hit of some sort. And I really like this effect. It's sort of subtle, kind of minimal. But at the same time, I mean, you can clearly see that there's a shield and that you're, you're hitting it. So I really like it. To me, it's better than sort of a cheesy, always visible shield effect, because I just, I'm not a fan of that. It still has a shape, and the shape of the shield conforms to the ship. And as you might guess, uh, if you have a small enough ship, you can actually duck under that shield and then the shield no longer blocks your shots. So this is a viable gameplay tactic. If you've got a small fighter or bomber, you can try to get under the shield of a cap ship and attack it directly. And the AI, hopefully, will be able to do the same thing. So that becomes a valid strategy. Uh, and one thing that I'm planning gameplay-wise is the, the shape of shields is going to be a trade-off area. Uh, you can have a tight-fitting shield that will be a little bit weaker, or you can have a sort of loose shield that's kind of more, more bubbly, but will be stronger. Um, so if you choose the loose shield, you know, you'll have a stronger shield, but you'll also risk fighters getting in more easily, you know, bombing you. So that'll be a gameplay trade-off, and you'll also be able to have multiple shields if you have multiple generator hardpoints, um, but I can't show that at this point in time yet. So what I'm going to show now is what I call the command interface. It's basically the, the RTS interface. This is going to be your sort of Swiss army knife um, of controlling your fleet and sort of the, the things within your local system. Right now, all I've really got done is sort of the graphical look and the structure of the menus, some of the menus. Uh, there's going to be way more information on this. I really want to provide as much control as possible in this interface. Like I said, I want it to be sort of your Swiss Army Knife RTS control, uh, where you'll plan your battles and everything. So right now you can see I can just sort of navigate this view of the world, sort of holographic effect. I quite like this effect. Of course, your, your visibility will realistically be limited by your sensor range. Right now, that's not the case, but it will be. So I'm going to try to select a few units here. Right now, it's, it's pretty hard because of the scale. Um, you can't really see them very well, but in the future, I'll have icons. Uh, when they get to the point where you can't see them anymore, they'll just be an icon. So you'll be able to select them easily. So bear with me right now because I don't have those in place yet. It's kind of hard to select. So what I'm doing right now is issuing an order. I'm going to issue a follow order, and you can see this action menu. I've pulled it up on my ship. Basically, this gives me a list of all the actions that I can perform on this object. And since it's a ship, I can tell someone to follow it. So I just ordered one of those escorts to follow me. Right now, the, the ability to customize actions is limited at best but the framework is in place and so all I have to do really is add more details to the way that those actions are executed 
and then they'll appear in the menu and you'll have more control. So I'm going to order these guys to follow me. Again, you can see my little action menu. And uh, that slider was the lead time slider. That's currently the only parameter of the follow action, but there will be way more in the future. But that, that just controls sort of how, uh, how far ahead of me they're going to fly. So you can tell them to fly ahead or, or to hang back or to fly sort of next to you. And I've told those three to fly ahead of me. And there they are. I really like the feeling of having a fleet or a wingman flying in front of me. It makes me feel safe. Right now there, there's not really a formation going on there, but there will be a formation editor. I'll get to that soon, so you'll be able to control the formation in which those ships fly. Uh, you can see the those fighters have a shield as well, and it's obviously much smaller, so when you hit it, more of it lights up and you can sort of see the shape of that shield. So we're going to go over here and cause a little bit of trouble for this other cap ship, as we like to do. So that, that ship has a shield as well, as you can see. So I'm going to order my fleet, or my little squadron, to attack it. Uh, as you probably saw, there were no options in that attack menu, but there will be, because an attack is a pretty customizable command. Right now, the attacking logic is actually even more basic than it was a month ago, but that's because I'm overhauling a lot of the AI and that will come in February. So right now they're just kind of sitting there shooting at the ship. Let's see what it looks like when this guy retaliates. Make it a fair fight. Boom. Okay, so that's the shield explosion effect and, and the hull explosion effect almost at the same time. Yeah, that's because that capital ship has very powerful weapons. Poor little fighter. Let's, uh, let's see that again. So as you can see, you can see weapon fire in that interface, which I like. Uh, <laughs> made short work of him too. But that, that blue looking like plasma explosion you saw was the shield coming down. Again, made very short work of them. Well, that was fun. So I just want to show you this uh, this interface. It's just my little graphics control interface, but it's demonstrating the new sort of GUI graphical user interface engine that I made this this month. Hopefully it looks slicker than the previous menus. I like it. Gotta show some dust, of course. Always my favorite thing, other than asteroids. Well, I guess that's about it. Just show this up close one more time. Oh, I'll uh, show you that you can destroy these turrets. 
course, as I've said before, hard points, individual hard points are, are destructible. And that's basically it, so I'll, uh, I'll end by checking out this asteroid. Classic thing to do. So uh, I, I hope you're pleased with the progress that's been made this month. I certainly am, and I'm looking forward to doing more gameplay-related things next month. And I, I'm just really excited for the direction that Limit Theory is going in. And uh, thank, thanks so much to everyone who supported, and thanks to everyone who's following it, even if you didn't support. And if you want more frequent updates, head on over to the forums, because I'm very active there. Thanks for watching.